Hello and welcome to the show. This is Everything Under the Sun. My name is Ty. Hope all of you are doing amazing, and taking care of yourselves, appreciating yourselves, embracing yourselves, and all that comes within your experience. I wanted to do this short message. This is going to be a short episode, but it's really been something that's been on my mind. I've been speaking a lot throughout the course of this entire podcast about embracing these things that appear within our lives, embracing these situations, embracing these feelings that arise, embracing life. And a lot of times that can be very challenging because we think about, yes, I want to embrace it all. And, you know, we embrace the sunshine and the trees and the breeze and our friendships and these connections. And that's all really great. But a saying is that, you know, it's easy to be happy in a candy store. And, you know, all these pleasant things that arise in our lives, that's something so incredible to embrace those things and to acknowledge that they exist. But it's a little more challenging to embrace life situations that seem to be more challenging, seem to be things that disrupt our happiness, seems to be things that impede on the progress that we feel we're seeing in our lives, just impede in our life experience altogether. And it's hard to embrace those things, or it seems very hard to embrace those things because we want to see them changed. We don't want to see our bank account empty. We don't want to see love leave our life in various ways. We don't want to see war and impoverishment and and starvation and death. We don't want to see these things. So we feel very adamant against not embracing them, against looking away from them, turning away from them, casting those things aside and judging them, condemning them as bad. I'm not going to look in that way. I'm not even going to talk about that. Don't bring that up at the dinner table because it's going to cause problems. There are these things that we restrict ourselves from, and this is life. This is our life that we're experiencing, and we restrict ourselves from these events that happen in life. And again, it can be very hard because, again, we want to see them changed. We want to see them transmuted into something that's more in alignment with what we know for ourselves. And... It's something so peculiar because we know our love so much. And even if consciously you don't recognize this love that we all are, it is inherent within the very beliefs that we hold, the very feelings that arise when we see massacres, when we see people starving, when we see death and destruction of things like trees. You know, trees don't speak. They don't hold signs up yet. There are people that throw their compassion and their love towards seeing these trees that are being deforested. And not even trees in the most significant sense, like an entire forest of trees going down, because that's an environmental issue, of course. But maybe in a public park that has maybe 10 trees that, you know, not the most significant carbon footprint as far as just eliminating them, but people still have compassion for life and things that exist and things that are. It's something that is inherent within just who we are. And we receive that and we connect with that on various levels. And as we feel that more and more in our lives, we'll see these things that are directly opposed to that. And naturally, it seems like we want to push away from it. And we want to push away from it because it's not who we are within the essence of who we are. But pushing away from it is pushing away from the fact that it does exist. It is here. And just like trying to push away a negative emotion that is within you, you know that it's not going anywhere. You know that it's still there and it's actually festering more. It's building more. Embracing something is just allowing it at the table. It's allowing it to be there. It's allowing it to be in the room. It's allowing it to exist. And I know that many of us in our lives have felt it's like, man, I just want to exist. I just want to be who I am. With all my sadness and all my pain, I just want to feel what I feel and I want to be who I am and I want to express myself how I want to express myself. We want this for ourselves in our lives. We want to just be. And if you imagine these situations as they are in the world, and I know that this may start to get a little fady in some ways where you start to think about other situations like war and you know famine and, and people dying on extreme levels, but... If you think of these things as, thi- as as entities that just want to exist, that just want to be noticed and be acknowledged for just being, then you'll treat them just as these emotions and you'll allow them to be at the table. And it's not saying that I approve of this. 
it's not saying that I want more of this. It's not saying I'm going to hop in the comment section and spew more hate because, you know, I'm just going to embrace it. Embracing it means that you're allowing it to be exactly as it is. And you're not judging it as good or bad because even those judgments are something that is pulling you down into a restrictive state. Because if you judge something as good, then obviously there's an opposite. There's a bad. And now it's not saying that you can't appreciate good, that you can't allow good at the table and to bask in it and to maybe have more conversation at that table with that good thing. But it means that everyone at that table is equal, the good and the bad. It just is. It's just another being at that table. So be at that table with it. And even if you don't cast your attention or focus your attention on that thing, it doesn't mean that you're not embracing it. It doesn't mean that you can't embrace it. So allowing these things to be in our experience, it's really just allowing it to be exactly as it is. And naturally, the love that we are will help you to realize maybe avenues in which you wish to be of impact, of what you wish to change and see transmuted. And this will be from a perspective of knowing that you are abundance, that you are joy, that you are love, that you are health, and that you can heal any of these wounds that are showing up and appearing in this world. Death, war, decay, suffering, sadness, anxiety, stress, worry, all these things are wounds. And you can heal them in your unique way. And this is why it's so important for us to move on our own path because you have words that will impact people in different ways than your neighbor does. You have skills and, and things within this life experience, things that may have happened within the suffering that you experienced in this life, things that may have happened within the tumultuous times within your life, but those experiences helped you to mold this healing in a way that can be so unique and something that is so important in helping this world to heal. Because maybe there are things within your experiences that help you to combat environmental issues or political issues or self-hate issues or just whatever it is that this world is suffering from, the wounds that this world is suffering from. You have unique skills, you have a unique perspective, and as we embrace this love and as we embrace all this life, we can realize that we can look at these things with eyes of compassion and give this love that we are and give this peace that we are and aid in the way that we know that we can but we can't do that if we're constantly turning away from it it's just like emotional wounds things that we're dealing with within ourselves the more we cast them away the more we push them away they're just building up inside and there's going to be some situation in our lives that's going to put it in our forefront and it's going to be something that feels very unpleasant and we're going to try to hide it away again and it's just going to build up more and more you feel that within yourself, but when you confront your emotions and you allow your sadness to be in the room, you're like, yeah, I, I feel sad and that's okay. I know that in the next moment that I feel the strength to, I will choose something else. I know that this experience is, is something that's temporary. So I know that in the next moment, I'll choose something else. And I know that even if I feel this feeling now, it's not a failure. It's me embracing what exactly is right now. And I know that by looking at this and recognizing the feeling that I have and the feeling that I want to f experience, I know that I will make a different choice in the next moment. I know that I will work towards making choices that are more in alignment with what I feel. I know that I will make choices that are going to help me to see the transformation that I want to see, not only in myself, but in this world around me. But I know that it starts with me embracing all that is. Embracing all the emotions that come up, all the beliefs that come up, all the things that cause me anger and pain and sadness and judgment and restriction. Because all these things are tied to beliefs that keep us hindered. And I know it may seem like it's justifiable to say, well, yeah, that person just murdered a school bus full of children. Well, yeah, of course you don't want to condone that action. You don't want to you know, say like, well, keep on doing that. Like everything is just fine. You're obviously not going to do that, but you can take it for what it is because your anger, your sadness, your pain, the things that you're feeling, the things that you're thinking right now about how maybe things could have been different, how things you know are so bad and how they're terrible and all those thoughts may be something that is validly being felt. Maybe you're saying those children will never get to grow old. That's a fact. 
if so-and-so had happened or so-and-so had interfered, then maybe they would be here today. That's also a fact. But there's, there's nothing that's going to change the situation. There's nothing that's going to change what already happened. So that, that holding on to things that have happened and not being able to embrace things that have occurred, that's not embracing this life. That's not being the encompassing essence of this life. And as we restrict more and more of this life from our experiences, we feel less and less. We feel more restricted. We feel less free. Embracing and allowing these things to be exactly what they are, it is allowing more freedom. It's allowing you to look at the image and not be frightened by it. It's allowing you to look at this and not cringe and not run into fear and not run into a fit of rage. Because what will your rage do to help the angry? What will your anger and frustration do to help people that are starving and help the war? These feelings and these emotions, they, they do nothing but hinder us. And the only thing that we can get from them is the realization that we are being pointed in a direction that is opposite of what we want to go towards. That we are giving our attention towards something that is not truly in alignment with what we feel. You can look at impoverishment and starvation in the world and say, I am so thankful I get to see this because I know that I know the abundance that I am. And I know that there is a way to transform this. I see that there is war and chaos going about. But from the peace that I feel within myself, I know that this is something that we can all feel. And I know that I don't want to pick up a gun and shoot anyone when I feel this. So if other people can feel this too, then imagine what can happen you know as we start to embrace things we can embrace all things we don't have to say that oh you know if i don't get mad about this now then nothing's going to happen if we don't get mad enough then nothing's going to change that's false the anger has been something that's been perpetuated for thousands of years allow yourself to embrace these things and again it doesn't mean that you're gonna start hopping in the comment section and saying all these terrible things Maybe you're not going to start writing signs to promote the war and to promote starvation. You're not going to do these things. You know you're not going to do these things. But you do know the feeling of restriction that comes about when you look at these things. You know that the pain that you feel is something that feels painful. What do you want to choose? And you can choose like, okay, well, you know, maybe I'll be happy if I just don't look at it. Well, that's cutting yourself off. Can you have your happiness while you still see this thing? And there's another thought of selfishness. It's like, oh, well, I'm being selfish if I'm happy while all this stuff is happening. Well, no. I mean, that, that it's, it seems so, it seems like it would be logical to think that, you know, like I, I'm, it's wrong for me to be happy while other people are suffering. But if you wish to change that suffering into happiness, then, then how can you adding more sadness to that equation equal happiness it's like all the motivational speakers if if they were like yeah you know i really wish things would work out you know you know you should go for that but you know i'm honestly not too sure if they weren't certain about their moves and certain about the things that they were doing then you wouldn't feel so confident in moving towards what they're saying you wouldn't be confident in wanting to shift your own life i mean these things are something that it's within the very aspect of so many things that we grab our attention towards are these things that feel like they're speaking some kind of truth towards what we feel within ourselves. So as we go out to try to transform this world, be confident in what you're feeling. Be confident in the knowing that you have of your happiness. And it starts with knowing that you can walk in happiness yourself. Knowing that you can make choices and embrace this life and not be frightened by it. Knowing that the image of the worst possible thing can be before you and it's not something that you react to rather you respond to it so each and every moment that you can embrace what is embrace this life that is right before us embrace all the things that are arising the good and the bad and look at them both with the fact that you know these are just situations that are arising and if I wish to transmute them to something else, then I have the power to do that. I know that I can do that. So I'm not going to look at this with fear and remorse and apathy 
like this is just what it is. I'll look at it with eyes of love and encouragement and knowing that I know that change can come about and I'll do what I can to make that change as it feels good for me to do it. There's, there's something so magical about this life and it's something so incredible and each and every moment that we embrace this life and choose love and choose peace as we embrace the things that arise, this feeling will pervade our experience and it's a feeling that is incredible it's it's beyond words it is freedom it is life and it's something that we can bring ourselves to feel more and more as we embrace all aspects of it and i know that it can be challenging sometimes but even in the face of aggression there can be love and there are many people that experience this maybe there's a three-year-old child and a parent and the parent takes the toy away because the child may have done something wrong or that they judged is wrong. And the kid maybe kicks and screams and hits the parent and says, I hate you, I hate you, I hate you. This is a two, three-year-old kid maybe just learned the words, I hate you, and, and started to use this. Now this parent is getting words that if anyone else did this in public, start kicking them and screaming at them and telling them that they hate them, then it'd be a completely different reaction. But you know, the parent probably just says, Yo, no, you don't hate me. You know, you don't say things like that. Or maybe that's not a nice thing to say. Maybe you speak to them in that way, but you still love that kid. You still love your child. Love is still abundantly present despite the fact that they hit you and said that they hate you. And likely, they're feeling anger for you. And those words probably aren't far off from what they feel. But in the deepest midst of who they are, they know that that love is something that's always there. And that's why when you hug them and you kiss them, they forget all about it and they continue enjoying their day. Allow love to be something that is always pervading that situation. There are a lot of people kicking and screaming. There are a lot of people punching and saying, I hate you. Embrace them. Embrace it. Know that it is and know that that anger will be something that subsides. Just like the parent knows that that child will calm down. Hold your peace. And that others recognize that this is something that you choose. And maybe they will choose that as well. So, that's all I have for this episode. If you have any thoughts or ideas or anything that you'd like to share, you can send those to everything.sunpodcast at gmail.com. You can join any of the social media groups, Instagram, everything.sunpodcast, Twitter, at everysunpodcast, and the Facebook group, at everysunpodcast as well. You can also join the YouTube page. You can search Everything Under the Sun Podcasts with Ty Delamar, and you will find me. And that's all I got. I love you all so, so much, and I'll talk to you soon.